In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now we move on to the main topic of these talks. We ask the question today, what is prayer? Well, I'd like to give you a definition of prayer, <clears throat> and then we'll pick through this definition and see what each of the terms means. Prayer is an elevation of the soul to God, to converse intimately with Him, with the twofold aim of glorifying Him, and finding in Him our happiness. And I'll put that definition right in the, uh, the description of the video so you can look at it while I'm explaining it. Prayer is first an elevation of the soul. Elevation of the soul. You know at Mass we say, the priest says, Susum corda. And he says, uh, then you say, Habemus ad dominum. Notice too that when he says Susum Corda, he lifts up his hands to signify that we lift our hearts up to God. So this is the way to describe the elevation of the soul. Susum Corda, lift up your hearts. Our soul has a built-in desire to be lifted up, to seek the ultimate good. We will not be satisfied until we have that supreme and infinite good. We desire the infinite, really. Although our soul has this desire built into it, we are held down to the earth. Imagine our soul like a helium balloon. A helium balloon will naturally want to go upwards unless it's tied down to a stone on the floor. Then it'll be, it'll be stuck. It won't go up. This is a good image of a uh, of man, basically. His soul is made to go upwards. It naturally wants to go upwards and find that infinite good, which is God, but it's tied down to earthly things. There's that stone that it's tied to. He doesn't want to give up those things either. So we have to, if we want to uh, have a deeper prayer life, we have to learn to cut that stone, to cut the rope to which the stone is tied. And I'll speak about that later. That basically means cutting attachments, cutting off sins, cutting off anything that, uh, that keeps our soul from attaining that union with God through prayer. So again, prayer is an elevation of the soul to God. Lift up your hearts. Next, it's the elevation of the soul to God to converse intimately with Him. This is very, very important to converse intimately with Him. First of all, we said to converse. This is a two-way thing. In prayer, we speak and we listen. Sometimes it's too easy to just speak. You say all your prayers and then you finish, make the sign of the cross quickly and you're done. But did you ever give God a chance to speak to you? Now, he usually will not speak to us in um, sort of extraordinary uh, sounds as if someone heard his voice actually speaking in their ear. He speaks in the silence of the soul. But we must listen. So it's a conversation. Again, on this point, we should not feel idle if we simply listen to God. That's, I know sometimes you might feel like, oh, but I'm not doing anything. No, you've done something already. You've prayed, you've said your part. Now sit for a while and listen to God. And then you can say some more things after that. So it's a conversation. <clears throat> we need not even say too much because God knows the secret thoughts of our hearts. Remember what Martha and Mary said to him after uh, when Lazarus was going to die. They sent to him saying, Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. That's it. They didn't have to say, 
and Lord, he's sick and you have to come at this time and this day and this is how you're going to get here and we'll have this and this plan for you. They just said the problem. Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. Because they had a great trust in Christ. Christ knows all things. He knows the secret desires of our hearts. So prayer is a conversation. <clears throat> and then, to, uh, when we pr uh, to pray is to converse intimately with God. Another very important key word, intimately. Not robotically, um, not out of mere routine, which has no heart to it. No, remember, the words must always be inspired by the heart, because it comes from the heart, as I said, uh, I think I said yesterday, uh, the heart is the center of man, the center of man from which comes good or bad. So when we pray, when we say Hail Marys and Our Fathers and such, we must not say them robotically, but from the heart. And that means intimately. So basically what I'm trying to say is, um, here's a good example. Um, imagine that you called up your friend on the phone. You haven't heard your, you haven't talked to your friend in such a long time, your best friend. And you call him up and said, my friend, how are you doing? Talk to me. Tell me how you've been. But the whole time he's very aloof from the conversation. And you think it's strange. What's wrong? He's very aloof. Come on, tell me how you've been. And he finally tells you in a very robotic way, I have been very good. The sky is blue. The clouds are clear. The birds are flying in the air. It's everything is good. Everything is perfect. Thank you for asking me. You would be freaked out that your friend is speaking to you in such a robotic way. You say, where's his heart? Where's this intimate intimacy in our speech? So we have to speak intimately with God, not robotically or out of mere routine. Again, I think of um, there's this function in, in Gmail. Whoever uses Gmail, you probably know about this. The function to do automatic replies so that, you know, if someone sends a message to you and you want to reply, there's like, uh, there's like these five options on the bottom. Just you click it and it gives an automatic reply. You know, one is like, thank you. The other one is like, you know, uh, I appreciate your words. Have a great day. And you can click that and it just sends off uh, right away. I never want to use that. I don't think, I'm not sure if anyone wants to use that because it seems heartless. And you go, you, when you click that, you're wondering, is the person going to know that I just clicked something and didn't bother to type anything from my heart? So this is what our prayer can become like if we're not speaking intimately with God. It becomes just this click thing where we just say, Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, with thee, blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. What? Like, um, if you finish a Hail Mary in three seconds, then there's a possibility that we could be saying it too robotically. So that's a very important point. Uh, prayer is that intimate conversation with God. So continuing our definition, prayer is the elevation of the soul to God to converse intimately with Him with the twofold aim of glorifying Him and finding our happiness in Him, finding in Him our true happiness. You might wonder, how does this compare to the other definition I learned about the ends of prayer? You might have learned another definition that prayer has a four, fourfold end. It's adoration, thanksgiving, reparation, and petition. How does that compare with this twofold end of glorifying God and finding our happiness in Him? Well, they do fit together perfectly, actually. Um, the definition I'm giving you today is basically, it's a more general definition that encompasses those four things in it. What I'm trying to say is that whenever we are adoring God, giving Him thanks, making reparation, or petitioning Him, we are glorifying Him. Again, whenever we are adoring God, thanking God, petitioning Him, and make reparation, we are finding our happiness in Him. It gives us happiness and fulfillment 
to adore and worship God. So don't be confused about this d different de definition I've given you about the ends of prayer. They both do go together perfectly. Now, again, this definition, glorif uh, so the end of prayer is glorifying God and finding our happiness in Him. This, let's look at this in comparison with another definition, which um, it's not wrong, but it's not the fullest definition that we can have. You might go up to, to someone and say, what is prayer? Many people would say, prayer is asking God for something. It's when you want something from God, and you ask him for it. So that definition is not wrong, but it only encompasses one of those four ends of prayer, petition. Prayer is more than just petition. It's also adoring God, thanking God, making reparation to God too. So I'm trying to, to make this clear to show that Prayer doesn't necessarily need to have this utilitarian aspect to it. Like, I'm only going to pray when I need something from God. No, we can pray to God. We don't have to ask Him anything. We could just adore Him and thank Him for everything He's given us. We could just sit in His presence without making any petitions. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. But it's still good to make petitions. Our Lord says to knock on the door and we have to knock really hard and ask Him a, a lot for, uh, for good things, of course, and noble things. Now, the I like to, as an example for the perfect prayer, I like to propose the Psalter to you all. The Psalter is the 150 Psalms. If you read these, you'll see that they are the perfect prayer. They contain all the ends of prayer in them in the most perfect way. Adoration, thanksgiving, reparation, petition, and those two more general ends. Glorifying God, finding our happiness in Him. The, the Psalms are such a, a perfect model of how we should pray. They also show that great intimacy which we should have with God when we pray. This is why the church, really from uh, the beginning, has prayed the Psalms nonstop. And priests and religious and even lay people pray them every week in the divine office. So that's our definition of prayer today. I hope it helps you out. Um, yeah, tomorrow we're going to speak about the union that can be achieved with God through prayer. Good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as he was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.